Um, at, at what point did you, you know, I mean, you must have started out thinking, I'm going to do a little Hebrew. I mean, where, where, where did it pass from, I'm going to do a little Hebrew to, I'm really going to push on with this? Yeah. I think the whole like self-awareness journey has changed, you know, at first I just, it's just an instinct. You're interested in something, you open a book, you start studying it. I think the longer I've been involved, you, you start to take more like that critically objective, like what am I doing, what's the plan here? And, um, and I think for myself the plan um, at this point, um, inshallah, is, is fluency. And, and I, really, I really do believe that fluency is a pretty false metric. That, that people use, like uh, my friends in the States, like, Ryan, you've lived in Israel like a year and a half, two years, are you fluent? I'm like, it's a false metric because fluency is something that takes quite a long time to really be able to understand w natively the, the sort of uh, fluctuations, intonations, idioms, uh, subtle jokes. Um, man, it's, it's a long journey. But um, I think my goal is to progress as far into that as I can because I like it. Uh, doing right now, and as you can see, these I've put these ones in, which later today I'll find the definitions for them. But like right here, I've got mean, median, and mode. <laughs> Some mathematical terms that I that I think are good to know. Um, to talking about the natives, like theological terms that are like like a, like a Yiddish uh, to like bourgeois. You know, like how would you express Marxism in Hebrew? <laughs> um, like or then. You know, you get to more precise semantic divisions, like the words achid or meuchad. They're very close and they have the same root, but it's the difference between uniform and united. And that's an important difference to know. And so to put them back to back allows me to compare them back to back. Um, you enjoy poetry a good deal. Tell, mm -hmm. me, tell me about your, uh, how do you engage with um, poetry, not in its written form, its spoken form. Hmm. Well, sometimes, you know, we're in Jerusalem, which is a hub of culture, and so sometimes at uh, cafes or something they'll have poetry readings where uh, the poets will come to share, and so I'll go to those sometimes and listen, and poetry is a different kinds of language, and they're doing things with language that's different, so you'll talk about a black forest of cake, you know, and you're like, what? But it's actually good because you're listening to it, and I find that in language you can be really dependent on your contextual uh, instinct, and you're like, wow, I expect they're probably going to talk about this next. So you're anticipating vocabulary, but in poetry, you really have to be on the ball because you can just turn the corner of the theme so quick. And so it actually increases my acuteness of listening uh, to be able to understand phrases like a black forest of cake, because uh, I would never expect that. <laughs> so welcome to the Holy of Holies of my Hebrew studies, which is really this small notebook in which I've um, really detailed as well as I can all the different... Um, grammatical and syntactical um, uh, methods of the Hebrew language. And reviewing this is what's really been the, the infrastructure of language for me. And then you put inside of that infrastructure different words and different idioms and whatever, but you need the infrastructure. You can't build unless you have that. And so this here is just um, handwritten conjugations and, and um, exceptions to the rules that I can review and um, jot down questions and, and and I've got all my different classes so I'm in my fifth class but I've got them all in here so this is hey so this is the beginning of my fifth class but it starts here at the beginning of bait which is the second class and that's where I actually started Hebrew um, and then we'll move on and start to Gimel so it's great because it allows for the integration of all this material and not to see them as fragments but to see them as a, you know as a whole and then it also encourages me that you know when I'm here and I'm learning a new concept in class and I'm a little rusty on, I can just flip back here and continually be doing this, you know, learning in circles and uh, be progressing a little bit further, but, but be circling back to the previous material and it helps uh, helps it to really become cemented in my mind. And then, um, so yeah, this is, a, and I also use a dictionary that's really important to me to use. Um, this is just an online tool um, that just generates quick definitions, which allows you to learn in real time. You're not... You're not derailing your train of thought for three minutes looking up a word. You're just for for four seconds, and you, and it allows you to continue the train of thought. And to, I think it accelerates my ability to think in Hebrew when I don't have to take these long, you know, circuitous routes to a definition. Just boom, and that's really important. And what is it you were talking about online? 
What's what's the dictionary? This is called Morphix. And so like actually like, you know, if I was this is probably this will be the first thing that I do today is to figure out the definition of these words. So I'll just come here. Oops. And then I'll see the definition. And then I'll write it down. And it's good to have a, a dictionary that's sensitive to this different semantic functions of a word, you know, like it can be used in one sense, but then in a different context, it can be used in a different sense. And to try to, to try to be aware of that and nimble in your understanding of a word is also important. So I, I feel like music helps me too, since I've been a little boy, I started playing the piano when I was about seven. And then when I was in junior high, the guitar became cooler, so I put the piano to the side. And uh, But I feel like when I'm speaking in Hebrew, my mind almost goes to a place like music, where it's less less um, analyzing and just more intuitive and just allow the the mellifluous Hebrew to um, to just enter into my mind and not not feel like I have to translate into English but it's more like music and uh, I think that's helpful for me too. Enrolling in regular courses or sitting in on regular courses, have you tried that? Yeah, I've I've done um, at the at the university level that we're at they start to put us in classes to to experience using the language to learn you know and my, my idea is um, if and when I continue with full-time studies, I'd like to do that possibly here and writing my thesis in Hebrew, reading and sitting in coursework in Hebrew and, and letting it become um, yeah, my way of learning. So I, I hope to sometime be enrolled full-time in Hebrew studies. So, so right now you do visit some courses? Sure. Uh, yeah, do any regularly? or None regularly, because, mm -hmm. um, but, the, but it's important that they're actually putting us in different kinds of courses and different kinds of seminars because we're encountering different types of vocabulary from, you know, mm -hmm. uh, from film symbolism all the way to Semitic language studies to different, different uh, themes. And so that's important. So they're spacing us out. And then mm -hmm. at some point I can plunge into something if I really want to be an expert at some, mm -hmm. some area. Sure. Yeah. This is where I spend my time and um, where I do like public relations work for Shevet I work on our, uh, on our website, on our Facebook or um, we have different international groups, and I can work with them a little bit. And then this also where I study Hebrew. So these are my uh, these are my handmade Hebrew dictionaries here, numbers volumes two and three. And um, essentially, you know, when you live in a country that speaks a different language, you're encountering new words all the time. And so I just kind of jot them down methodically. And uh, and even though like at the moment I'm in this dictionary. For entries, I'm in this dictionary for studying, and I'm trying to continually be inputting new material while I'm reviewing old material. And it just uh, keeps opening these little uh, things in my head that remind me about these words, because I would never remember words if I just encountered them once. You have to encounter them several times, so tell, it's my theory. It's working good. T tell, t tell me about, do, do you have a, a, a particular theme that you're, you're pursuing at the moment, or...? No, I mean, th that's the cool thing about language is that it's, it's, it's so broad thematically and you can, you know, and, and as you move from subject to subject, there's a whole cluster of pertinent words. So there's studying politics, there's a cluster of pertinent words, and then when you move to the kitchen, <laughs> there's a new cluster of pertinent words, and then when you move to, you know, I don't know, computing, there's a whole new cluster of words, so really you're, and I find actually it's more interesting to kind of interweave them because I feel like language itself is an organic mesh in our brains. We're not compartmentalized. I'm not a computer. Um, I'm an organic mesh. <laughs> and so when I, when I let my dictionary follow that structure, I feel like, you know, if I'm looking at 20 words, I could be in 20 different subjects. And that's actually more helpful, I think, because um, it helps me to synthesize the language and, and um, have it be um, integrated in my mind.